on this episode of The Hornet King. I'm the Hornet King, and I remove some incredible and insane wasp nests. Hey everyone, welcome to the Hornet King channel. In this video, I'll be removing a German yellow jacket colony, Vespula Germanica, from this client's basement wall. This was an old house, and this wall here was actually plaster and lath, so I had to cut in behind it to be able to expose the cavities to where the nest actually was. So what I have to do is I have to locate exactly where the cavity is. So I do poke an exploratory hole, look for a little bit of activity flying out of it. In this case, there wasn't really anything coming out. So I had to take my sawzall and then cut a little bit larger of a hole so I can see exactly how the cavity is laid out inside of this wall. So here I did see some adults flying out of it, so I knew I was in the right vicinity. And all I had to do now was just shine my light in there and see exactly where the nest was. So a lot of activity flying out of there now that I kind of moved some things around. Time to start vacuuming up of some of the adults while I get ready to start cutting the hole a little bit bigger. But look at the size of this colony coming out of this hole. I knew that this was a large colony just by that little bit of activity. Though I couldn't see very well up inside of there, I did have to remove some of the plaster and some other parts of cement to be able to see the nest a little bit better. And the second that I touched that, all of this activity started pouring out of that hole. They were just waiting for me to make one more step towards getting to that nest. And the second that I did, they poured out of there in a fury and started attacking me. So one nice thing about having this particular wall, there was a window right down here and was allowing natural light coming in from outside. So anybody who's been here before and seen my videos, you know that I like having windows nearby that light is shining in because I'll leave those windows exposed so that way the adults will fly out of the cavity and then go right to the natural light at the window. And that's where they'll hover so then I can just take the vacuum down there at the end of the removal and just vacuum them up. Now I also had my LED lights down here too. So that was making some extra light here on the wall and things. So they were kind of flying around within this space. So this is actually the intermediate landing between the two flights of stairs. So I had to just kind of sit in this cramped corner while doing this removal. So I didn't really have all that much room to move around. So I was kind of dictated to sitting in this one spot, but they was able to trap the wasps kind of in this one little nook. So that way they weren't flying all around the basement or flying all around um, the stairwell or anything like that. So luckily my LED lights shining right onto the, the white plastered walls was keeping them either flying to the plastered walls or to the window itself. So they're just moving anything around at this point is just causing a fury of activity inside of that cavity space. But you can see some of the combs starting to be exposed and you can see just the numbers that are crawling around in between them and also coming out at me and my vacuum. This actually works out great to have them swarming like that coming out of this hole because that's how my vacuum sucks up the individuals. If they were just kind of clinging to the inside of the cavity or what have you, it's really hard to get them off there without going one by one and sucking them up. But if they're flying around and they're flying out, they're flying virtually directly into the nozzle itself, which works really, really well. 
This particular colony probably had about 3,000 to 3,500 adults inside, which is great, great numbers. Um, unfortunately, you really don't get to see the ultimate size of the nest being inside of here. And there was two beams that were kind of close side by side here that it was really difficult for me to even get too many good shots. So I really did try my best to be able to show you guys the size of the nest, but you'll just have to kind of take my word for it that this was a decent sized nest. You'll see all the comb coming out and you'll see all the numbers, um, but you won't be able to see them all at the same time to be able to say, wow, this is one massive nest. So even though cutting that hole a little bit bigger, all it really did was just expose the beam that I wasn't able to get my hand in underneath or behind. So I was really limited as to how much I could reach in and grab. Those of you who know my channel know that that's one of the eeriest parts about my job is reaching into a cavity space that you cannot see and trying to grab a nest full of thousands of stinging insects that could kill you in a heartbeat. That is one of the creepiest parts about my job. So using my pry bar as the, uh, as the goat here and just sliding it in between the comb layers to break them apart and that way I could slide them out one by one. Since they all stick together, otherwise I'd be just pulling out handfuls of clumps of nest. I'd rather pull out full sheets of the comb at one time and that's less material that I have to clean up at the end. People oftentimes will comment in my videos and say why don't I burn the nest and things like that. Um, these nests are like 90% water, and the reason being is the excrement from the wasps themselves, the excrement from the larvae that are inside, and the larvae themselves. There's thousands of larvae inside of these nests, and they're like little water balloons. So if you have thousands of little water balloons and you try to set that on fire, it's not going to burn. Plus, the nest material itself, even though it's made out of the cellulose from wood, is actually really not that flammable. It kind of more smolders than it does actually burn. So there's really no way to burn these nests out like some people like to suggest. Though I know some people saying is a joke that they would say that they would burn their house down if they uh, had a nest like this. But hey, if you're going to burn your house down, just give me that money and I'll come and remove the nest for you and you get to keep your house. <laughs> So I'm still able to reach my hand in there and pull out some pieces here and there with like my pointer and middle finger. So I use my pointer and middle finger just trying to squeeze out a little bit of the comb as I possibly can uh, until it's too far back up in there and then I end up using the pry bar and then just slide that in between and then just let it like rest on the top of the pry bar and try to gently coax it out of the hole. But look at all this comb coming out. I mean that is a lot of comb and that's a lot of larva inside of there. Luckily, this being German yellow jackets, they don't latch on like other species do, like Eastern yellow jackets or Southern yellow jackets. So that was one benefit to having this particular species. So even though they come out and swarm, they kind of just fly around and they end up going to the light. They will often not stick to the swarming behavior the entire time. Unlike Southern yellow jackets, is once they start swarming, they don't stop swarming until you vacuum them up. So even after all this time of removing all these wasps and removing all this comb, I still will bump a spot and that'll create a new fury, a new swarm of individuals coming out. And I try to vacuum up the comb as I'm pulling them out instead of just sitting them in there with a bunch of wasps on them and that way I have to deal with them later when I get home. I'd rather just vacuum them up at the exact time that I'm removing the nest. So oftentimes if I put them on there and there's a clump of them on the comb, I'll just vacuum them up right away and get that taken care of so I don't have to deal with it later. And even when I flip it over, you can see they kind of flew off and flew right to the window. So that actually serves a double purpose. One, I don't have to worry about them being in the bin. And two, I can just slide the vacuum nozzle around on the window and just vacuum them up there. But look at all those adults inside of there. I mean, that is just incredible. After all the ones I've already vacuumed up and all the ones that have already left the cavity, that's how many that are still in there just hanging out. There's some males in there. There's some new queens. But for the most part, those are workers. So unfortunately the angle that this was, trying to slide the wand of my vacuum in between these two beams of wood, it was really, really hard to get the right angle to be able to vacuum them off of the lower layer here. So I ended up just having to take the wand off and then just kind of just sliding the hose itself that was flexible inside of this cavity to vacuum up either the rest of the nest, the envelope, and the rest of the adults.
So this is pretty time consuming. I've took about maybe an hour and a half to do this particular removal. If they're exposed inside of a cavity, I can just reach in and grab the, most of the nest all at one time and pull it out and then vacuum up the cavity and then spray a little bit inside of there, tape it up and then leave. But this one was a little bit more of a unique case where I had to spend a lot more time trying to get all the comb out. It's like playing the game of operation. You're trying to like, trying to slide that pry bar in there to be able to get the nest out, at least get it loosened up off the bottom and then sliding everything out all at one time. Look at all that comb. That's just incredible. So you still see there's some comb up inside of there, up on the underside of this beam. And then there's also still some comb on the bottom beam that's on that's right at the top of the uh, foundation wall. Something I don't often like to do when I do my removals is use too much spray. But in this case, I did have to use some spray to be able to get all of the adults that were in behind the beam that I could not reach. And it worked like a charm, um, but that's not really something I like to do too much in practice. And I just don't like to spray inside people's homes, but this homeowner was okay with me doing that. They just wanted them gone. They really didn't care how I did it. Um, though they were appreciative of me not using too many chemicals. You can see here how the vacuum nozzle, I'm not able to angle it down far enough to be able to get this stuff right on the bottom. So I do come back and uh, take the wand off here and, uh, and then just drag the flexible hose down inside that spot to be able to get the rest of that material. So my phone camera actually died. Uh, the battery died from doing all these removals. I think this is the last removal of the day and uh, my battery finally died. So I ended up just uh, doing the rest of it with this outside camera here. And um, so you get to see some of the nests coming out. You don't really get to see inside the cavity again, uh, but there wasn't much change after that. I was able to reach my hand in there and grab the last few bits of the comb and uh, whatever I didn't get with my hand, I was able to just take the vacuum here, vacuum nozzle and just poke it around in there and suck everything up. People often say that I should get a uh, stronger vacuum, but this vacuum actually has some, a decent amount of suction. Uh, it's about a six and a half horsepower, and being a one and a quarter inch hose, it allows for a lot of suction. So it works out really, really well for vacuuming up the nest itself. So once I got that all finished up there, I got all the nest out, and uh, just take a little bit of the uh, foaming black flag and then just spray that up inside of the cavity and just killing any of the ones that are in the crevices and things inside this wall. And then I just tape up the entranceway and that way the homeowner won't see any more activity inside of that living space once I leave. Turkey. Come on, come on, come on. 